In this video, we are going to look at a CXC CSEC past the paper question from the year 2005. Figure 2 shows the labels from two bottles containing suspensions P and Q respectively, showing the formula and percentage composition of the active ingredients. And you can see that the active ingredients in suspension P is aluminum hydroxide and it is 78% of suspension P, while for suspension Q, calcium sulfate amounts to 83%. The question says, calculate the number of moles of aluminum hydroxide in 250 grams of suspension P. Now we must take the percentage in consideration. So step one, we have to find what is 78% of 250 grams. And that work out to be 195 grams. In step two, Calculate the RMM of aluminum hydroxide. And in aluminum hydroxide, you have one aluminum, three oxygen, which is 16 times three, equal to 48. One high, well, three hydrogen, each with a mass of one grams per mole, so that total to three grams per mole. And the total RMM for aluminum hydroxide is 78 grams per mole. Step three, this is where we calculate the moles of aluminum hydroxide in suspension P. Moles of aluminum hydroxide equal to the mass in grams of aluminum hydroxide over the relative molecular mass of aluminum hydroxide. And both were found earlier, so we simply put them in the equation. 195 over 78 grams per mole. Grams cancel the grams, the answer will be in mole. So it is 2.5 moles of aluminum hydroxide present in suspension P. Part B says, a student attempts to prepare a sample of suspension Q in the laboratory by reacting calcium with dilute sulfuric acid. The reaction stops after a short while with only a small amount of calcium sulfate formed and most of the calcium unreacted. So they want you to explain why the reaction stops after a while. During the reaction, the surface of the calcium metal it is coated with calcium sulfate PPT, which is the, sh the abbreviation for precipitate. This prevented any further reaction between the metal and the acid, especially since calcium sulfate is insoluble in water or at best slightly soluble in water. So what that means, each time the calcium sulfate forms, it sticks onto the surface of the calcium metal instead of going into sol solution where it would be dissolving and so forth. It just stays there and so that prevent any surface area being exposed to the hydrochloric acid for the reaction, reaction to take place any further. Now, however, because of the reactivity of the calcium metal, only small amounts of the calcium salt and hydrogen is produced from that particular reaction. Part three, part two of that uh, question states that outline a suitable laboratory method for preparing a dry sample of calcium sulfate. Include a, rele a relevant equation in your answer. That's for four marks. Step one, using the double decomposition reaction with calcium chloride and the sulfuric acid. You're going to place the two aqueous mixture in a beaker and allow them to react. Upon completing the reaction, this is what the equation looks like, the balance equation, where you have calcium chloride, 
with um, sulfuric acid producing calcium sulfate and hydrochloric acid and as you can see the double decomposition where the calcium replaced the hydrogen and the chloride replaced the the, the, the sulfate in that case so you have calcium sulfate and hydrochloric acid being formed so the reaction is a bit acidic given the formation of the hydrochloric acid right here step two says collect this calcium sulfate precipitate you're going to pour the mixture onto a filter paper that is anchored by a funnel over a beaker the aqueous filtrate which is which will run through pass through the, the, the filter paper into the beaker is collected then the calcium sulfate precipitate will remain onto the filter paper step 3 says the calcium sulfate is purified by washing by washing it with water to remove any excess or residual acid again since the reaction uh, produces hydrochloric acid you want to ensure that when you're drying your calcium sulfate no acid or little or no acid is present to contaminate your 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 product and step four the calcium sulfate is carefully removed from the filter paper onto a watch glass then taken to an incubator or an oven for drying Part C, which of this, which of the suspension, P or Q, could serve as an antacid? And my best bet would be suspension P, given the fact that it has aluminum hydroxide, and we know that antacid these days are made of aluminum, aluminum bases, magnesium bases, and so forth. And the antacid is what neutralizes heartburn within the stomach. So my best bet would be suspension P, given the, with the presence of the aluminum hydroxide there. Part 2 wants you to write a chemical equation to support your answer. And this would be the chemical equation between aluminum hydroxide plus the acid. The, the stomach, inside the stomach, it is acidic and uh, specifically hydrochloric acid and so this would be a neutralization reaction where aluminum chloride and water will be would produce will be produced and part D the final part of this final part of this question by mixing hot water and concentrated aqueous solution of iron 3 chloride a bright yellow colloid is formed colloid is formed state three ways in which a colloid differs from a suspension one the particles of colloids do not settle out when left standing so if you shake your colloidal mixture and leave it there the particles will never ever settle out two the colloidal particles cannot be separated by filtration and this is because of the colloidal particles which are with they are very small hence they are unable to be seen with the naked eyes so due to the size of the the particles in a collloid it passed through the filter paper or whatever sieving material you're used you're using to uh, try and separate the the mixture particles are really 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 small and so that comes to an end of another video if you like this video feel free to share feel free to subscribe thank you for watching and see you real soon